Why is all the rum gone? Yeah. I don't know what run <laughs> rum 30 is. Is your camera okay? Because it looks a little, a little off kilter. It's good. Okay. You want to go look? No. Okay. You should. Mm -hmm. I want you to go check it out and make sure I'm not silly. Kind of looks a little. Perfect. Like probably not much. Okay. This is why I hang the photos in the house. That's right. Yes. Greetings after week four on the road. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. We went through two very skinny states. <laughs> Vermont and New Hampshire. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. They're very skinny. I which have never been to New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we had Except a, for when we drove through it for that short little bit. Yeah, we had a short stint in New Hampshire on the way from Boston to Maine, just the just the tip. <laughs> They're gonna have to cut that out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. Okay. Okay. Could have been the moment. Should have never told you. A little too much to drink. Love is such a strong word. Don't know what the lines were. It's making me start to think. Hello, adventurers. Good morning. Uh, this is take two of our New Hampshire, Vermont video because take one had some audio issues. Yes. We left Bar Harbor, Maine and drove across the beautiful state of Maine into New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And we spent a night there in this wonderful, beautiful place called the White Mountains. Yes. Gorgeous. Yeah. We stayed at the Harvest Coast called, uh, the, well, it's the Cog Railway, and they are a Harvest Coast. They have a large lot that you can park in, RVs and trailers. Um, large lot. Very large. We got there. I think there were two RVs there, one of which had stayed the night before. They were doing the railway all the way up. And then by the time we got done with our um, railway trip, we were the only ones. Mm -hmm. Someone came in in a van pretty late into the night. Um, but yeah, it was gorgeous. And yes. First time in what he, I believe he said five weeks that it had been a clear day and you could see for, you could see Canada. A hundred miles. A hundred miles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Walked up to the Cog Railway, got our, got our ticket time and figured out what train we were going to be on because there's three trains that typically run up the mountain at the same time. Mm -hmm. They have a small museum up there. It talks about building the railway, and it shows you a map of all the things that go up to the rail and what you can see while you're up there and what you can see on the way up and back. Mm -hmm. um, they had this really cool single-person sled. <gasps> yes. It's um, how you could um, get down the mountain on a single rail car, and it was literally like a one-person's width. With it's two hands, right? Like the the record, record was like two and a half minutes or something. I think it's right at three. Okay. But three minutes to go up and back. Wow. Insane. The The train takes 45 minutes to go up and back. Mm -hmm. and 45 minutes to go up. Go up, yeah. yeah. And come back down. It's about yeah. the same. So five miles an hour roughly is how fast you go. Mm -hmm. They're, they provide you entertainment on the way up and back. There's somebody who's on a speaker system, mm -hmm. and the benches are pretty cool because the way when you're going up the railway, the back is on this side, but they flip the, flip the back over, so when you're riding back down the mountain, you're facing down. Mm -hmm. And there's an angle in the seats yes. because of the steep angle that you're going on an incline. They offset the angle of the incline so you're not leaning forward or you're not leaning too far mm -hmm. backwards, which is pretty cool. They. They build and repair and manufacture the rail, railways and everything. They do it all right there on the site. So mm -hmm. um, those those cog rails, cog engines were built many, many years ago. So they can rebuild mm -hmm. them or they can repair them all right there. Mm -hmm. 
Squirt. And they said they would continue to use the steam and coal engines yeah. until they can no longer repair them or use them. Yeah. I think there's only a few that are still in use. But it takes, how many tons of coal did he say? Just to go a up ton of coal and however many hundreds or gallons over a thousand of gallons of water to make one trip. Yeah. It was pretty incredible. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, the discovery map to Mount Washington Valley. Yeah. Trying to figure out what we're going to do, maybe tomorrow. Hey Blair, you got any fun facts for us? I don't have very many yet, but we're about to get a lot. The only thing I do know is that Mount Washington is one, if not the highest peak on the East Coast. But it was gorgeous. It was obviously windy and chilly at the top. It's known for its high winds and erratic weather. Yes, very. Um, so there was a clear day prior to us getting there. When we made it to the top, some of the clouds had rolled in, but you could still see pretty far. Um, but it was fun. It was very clear at the bottom. We were the last run of the day. Mm -hmm. um, once we got up top, some of the clouds rolled in, but you could still see pretty far and breaks in the cloud. There were many Appalachian Trail through hikers mm -hmm. and any other many other trail hikers up there. Mm -hmm. There's a post office up top. There's a gift shop up top. Mm -hmm. So if you just happen to be hiking through there, you can mail a letter or mm -hmm. you can replenish on your snacks or mm -hmm. whatever, get warm for a minute. Yeah. Uh, there's indoor places, but we had planned to hike the next day, but the, the weather turned pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And there's warning signs all over there that says, you know, worse weather in the U.S., mm -hmm. I mean, the exposed tree line for 12 miles, yes. above tree line for 12 miles. Yeah. yeah. The highest ever recorded wind speed is 231 miles an hour. And mm -hmm. it probably was higher than that, but it broke the dang machine. It did. And this is in the 30s. Yeah, in the 30s. This is the actual instrument that clocked the record setting 231 mile per hour winds in 1934. So. That's part of the little museum up top. And, but the views are spectacular. If you are in the New Hampshire and you are near the White Mountains, it is definitely worth a trip to get right up and back on the Cod Railway. Mm -hmm. uh, 100%. I would not do it again, but to experience it one time is It is. Good. And what's cool is if you have limited mobility or any sort of disability, this allows you to get to the peak of an incredible mountain. Yes, that's very And true. to be able to experience the awe and the wonder of what that is. And for them to be able to continue to maintain this for people that may not be able to hike the yeah. entire day all the way up and then plan to either camp or hike all the way down, it's an incredible opportunity. You can drive up there too. You can, yeah. Um, I don't, we didn't, the road to get that, the road to the Cog Railway and the road to drive up is on two opposite sides of the mountain. So yeah. it's not not super easy to get to one or the other. But yeah. the drive the drive through New Hampshire or through the mountain range, the presidential mountain range they oh call my it. Gosh. It's it's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. We have just missed the leaves changing color. So mm -hmm. um, just a couple of weeks too early. Yeah, we were there a couple of weeks too early. No big deal but some of the trees were starting to turn, yeah. but man, if you drive down some of these roads and you imagine what the fall leaves look like, it's, oh, it's incredible. So last night, Blair and I stayed at a harvest host, which is where I'm currently standing. We are at the Cog Railway at the White Mountains in New Hampshire. Now, strange things seen in an RV park. We have newly neighbors who come zooming in this morning and you can see how close it is. I can touch both RVs. Now, here's the biggest kicker. This parking lot is quite large. Check it out. See that? Now, please don't be that person and park that close when you have all this space. Hundreds of hundreds of these things to fit in here. <laughs> from there we so we left new hampshire earlier than planned because we didn't hike and we went over to vermont mm -hmm. the only national park system in vermont is 
uh, a house and a farm, really, a farm across the street. That's not part of the deal, but the house is there. Mm -hmm. The It's the Marsh Billings Rockefeller yeah. National Historic Site. All the names. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rationale behind the, the names is it was the Marsh family, each yep. of which the daughters and then subsequently the granddaughter got married, and it was passed down through those that lineage. Yes. Um, and then it was donated by the Rockefellers to the National uh, Park System. And in a sense that he took out one TV and he passed over the keys. So yeah. everything in the house is original. Yes. It's not period S that's been replaced in the house. It is the artwork, the books, the everything. furniture, yeah. everything is original and it is gorgeous. Absolutely. absolutely gorgeous. We are currently in Vermont for the day. At the only national park in Vermont. Yeah. Roughly. It's a National Historic Park. Yeah, 20 years ago this opened. It was donated to the National Park System. From the, the Rockefeller Rockefellers. family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful home. Mm. And oddly enough, today is the very first time in two years you could walk through the house. Yeah. But there's a virtual place with all the paintings, and that's one of the largest attractions here. They actually do tours just mm -hmm. to show all the paintings in the house because it's really great. Yeah. The grounds here are beautiful. Gorgeous. Uh, this was the first, like, conservation place to, mm -hmm. to replant trees because yeah, I saw what conservation effort. deforestation did to the land. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a cool dairy across the street. We're going to go check it out in a moment. Yeah. House is behind us. Uh, absolute mm -hmm. great stop on Vermont. Mm -hmm. So if you're traveling through Vermont. Yep. Stop at the March Billings Rockefeller National Historic Park. Yeah. Um, it used to be deforested and used for farmland, specifically sheep. Yeah. And then... Um, through conservation efforts by all three families. Now it's gorgeous and green and hundreds of foot tall trees and looks over some beautiful Vermont hills. Yeah. Pepper had a good time too, just in case I might as well. <laughs> she greeted everyone <laughs> at the door. <laughs> Across the street is the farm. Yeah, the, the Billings farm, farm. The Billings farm. So you can go over there and have a farm day if you want to. There's a whole there's a whole tour involved with that. Mm -hmm. uh, plenty of parking. Beautiful drive in. Beautiful drive out. Yeah. We pull the rig through the parking lot. So if you have something large and you're traveling around to the national park systems, it's an easy place to get in and out of. It was. Except when someone parks right in front of you. <laughs> that seems to happen everywhere. For we the go. second time of this trip. <laughs> yeah. Well, this. Week, yeah, yeah. this week. Yeah. Hey, Blair. Guess what? Uh -oh. All of this space from here all the way down there, it was obviously not enough because we have somebody parked in front of us. Well, the cows were out. They have Jersey cows. They're known for their cheese and um, and products that way. Piper got to say hello. She did. She's. I don't know. I think she just is playful around horses and cows, but she's very vocal around them as well. And donkeys. And donkeys. We found that out yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From there, we did, we left and drove to a state park. Mm -hmm. So if you watched our video last week, my little clue I gave you was cheese and the 30th president. Mm -hmm. So our 30th president was brought into office because his, as the vice president, his president uh, died in office. So Calvin Coolidge is from Vermont. And his homestead, so the house he was born in, across the street, a house he grew up in from the age of four. The uh, barn. The barn, the church. The, the church, the store, the... Post office, gas station. Everything. Yeah. It's all there. All within a couple of blocks. It's a really neat, it's very random cool. spot. Uh, in the gorgeous hills of Vermont. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And they have just repaved the road to get there, so it's really <laughs> nice. 
what brought this to my attention was some months ago, while we were thinking about this trip and planning this trip, we knew we were going through Vermont. And on CBS Sunday morning, I saw this thing about Plymouth cheese in Vermont. And this young couple had recently bought it and taken it over. But they make cheese the same way they've made cheese there since... 200 years ago. Yeah. And it's delicious. We just had another block of it yesterday. <laughs> so, How many blocks did we leave with? Eight. Oh, God, I have no idea. Eight blocks of cheese. So they, ah. they make the cheese and age it. Then they cut it. Then they, they put it in wax. So the whole thing's wrapped in wax. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. And we love the way they make the cheese and the, the whole area. So mm -hmm. uh, Plymouth Cheese in Vermont. That if you go to the website right now, it says because of the CBS Sunday morning show, our, our shipping has been delayed. It's delayed. I was so thankful to be able to get a get a couple blocks of cheese yes. on our way across. So yes. very, very good cheese. But then you can tour the Calvin Coolidge place. It's all right there together. So mm -hmm. the, the Calvin Coolidge kind of history of him becoming president and his what he uh, took on and kept kept moving forward. And Funny enough, I was handed down a china set that was the same exact pattern and oh, china yeah. set that was in the Calvin Coolidge house. Yes. On this display. So yeah. that was very cool. It was cool. Yeah. We made our way over to New York, skirting a gigantic thunderstorm with hail, which we oh. tried to outrun, and we yes. successful. What do you think of these current weather conditions, Blair? <laughs> They're not very ideal. Holy rain. But the weather. We, uh, got we were on the edge of the weather. Right and it was on the horrible. Edge. I can't even imagine. Going it, straight no, through it. No. I was on passenger duty looking for overpasses and underpasses for us to sneak on into. Yeah, that, that was mm -hmm. not, not my favorite activity. No. But nonetheless, it was a good trip through the two skinniest states in America, I believe. Mm -hmm. New Jersey may compare Rhode Island. Rhode compare. Island's yeah. much smaller. Yeah. But, but yeah. anyway. It's a good trip. Very good trip. We're, we really enjoyed the, enjoyed the time there. Hopefully we can get back up in New England sometime yes. soon and spend some more some more time doing some other activities. Yeah. From there we left and went over to the state of New York and we made our way across New York. So stay tuned next week for some fun activities. Uh, has to do with a farm, a state capital, <laughs> some gigantic waterfalls, <laughs> a hurricane, and I guess we drove south from there. A buffalo. A buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> sure. All right. Buffalo. Live free or die, New Hampshire. Live free or die. Which one's Vermont? Welcome to our state. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love it. I don't think that's right. It's close. They should hire me for, for state mottos. Oh my God. And slogans. <laughs> You'd have a different one every day. I sure would. Oh. All, right. All right. Is it playtime time? Pepper's back awake. Yep. Yep. Got her burrito. Doing down dog. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us. Love you guys. And we will see you soon as we go. Play with a puppy yeah. and refurbish all the trains. A scout's being weird. She's just voicing her opinion on the matter. What? Yeah. <laughs> She's not very graceful when she walks. No. Piper, stay there. Welcome to the party. Glad you made it on your first attempt. <laughs> she misses the couch sometimes. <laughs> the couch, the bed. You'll hear a thud. Yeah. <laughs> and then she'll try again. I can't help you. She says, but, but you have a hand. That would be good on my noggin. Nope, Piper. Stay. Don't be jealous. I know. It's a tough life, isn't it? It's such a tough life. I know. Lay down. Down. 
or get some water too because it's always a necessity while we film. <laughs> or, uh, or when we're going to bed. Or that. Or the bone! <laughs> it is her scheduled morning playtime. It is. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy dogs. Extreme. Of all the thousands and thousands and thousands of people, I don't want her to eat that. She's trying to cover it up. Pepper! <laughs>